You will be amazed at the insights Vinny will share each week. He will share his experiences. He has taken $7 to over $220 million portfolio in commercial real estate. To reach Mr. Smiles, text the word syndication to 474747 or go to his website, vinnychopra.com. Hi, guys. Welcome to your weekly motivation power talk with Vinny Chopra, also known as Mr. Smiles. My name is Alicia Dubrow, and I have the privilege to interview this man each week. He is one of the most successful and positive person I have met to date. You can also hear his incredible stories where he's been a guest on over 75 different podcasts. You can also catch him on Facebook Live, 10 a.m. Pacific. You can also visit his website, vinnychopra.com, which you'll also find down here in the notes. Today, guys, we're going to talk about drive. So, Vinny, hi, Vinny. How are you today? Hi, Alicia. Thank you so much. I'm so privileged to have you as my co-host, and we're going to be crushing it together every week and try to bring some really great positive vibes in this world. I'm very, very excited about it. No, so am I. I, I am too. And I think, I think that this is going to be great. Um, you are so positive and so energetic all the time. I have no idea where you get the energy. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you it's not coffee. It's not <laughs> Actually, I get up just like this. My wife tells me, she says, boy, you are smiling all the time. Even in your sleep, you are smiling. <laughs> it must drive her nuts. <laughs> well, it's uh, 39 so years. You've been married 39 years. So, you know, I mean, she really enjoys and she, you know, puts up with me. <laughs> well, I'll give her credit. <laughs> um, all right. So, guys, so, let's just jump into drive. Um you know, drive to achieve something I know is really something that you focus on. What does that mean to you? What does that really mean? Drive to focus, you know, to, to drive to achieve something. Yes, you know, it's kind of like, uh, Alicia, how I look at it is that we all have dreams. We have a lot of dreams in our life right from the start when we are born. And then we get into, you know, elementary school, junior high school, how the things happen. We see successful people, we see mentors, we see a lot of people within the family or outside. And you start taking those pictures slowly, 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 and try to see what's happening around you. And that builds with the materialistic world that we live in. It gets you to really see why some people are very successful, some are not. And then you make some kind of mindset or some kind of drive comes in your mind. Drive comes later, actually. But the goals come or the dreams come to you. And you say, I want to be that person or I want to go there or I want to do this or I want to do that, you know, later on in my life or right now or things like that. So the drive comes after the goals come after the dreams, dreams come first. When you put the timeline to the dreams, come to the goals. And then if you are so committed to your goals, see, the big thing is the commitment. A lot of us dream about day and night doing so much stuff in our life, but we don't really get to do those things because we are not committed to them. See, that's what I find. Because if we are able to put ourselves down and on a piece of paper, and you know, like a lot of statistics come out from Stanford and from Harvard and all that, that I've gone through and a lot of our audience has gone through, is that only 7% or 14% on the top write down some goals in life. Hmm. Not 80, I think 80 some percent never write down goals. We think that we have goals in our mind, but those goals are not written down. They are not specific. They are not measurable and they are not, you know, uh, stretching us and things like that. All that, you know, the, uh, the, we talk about goal setting. The key thing is to have the commitment to achieve those goals. That brings the drive. Okay. And that actually brings me right to my next question. Um, what do you think is the most, uh, I guess, most important traits that you should have to be driven? 
You know, I think the number one trait one should always, always be thinking about, are you in your comfort zone? <laughs> you know, are you positive? I, I know you asked me for one thing, but again, you know, I, again, maybe I could say that winning attitude, you, you know, attitude does so much in your life. And I think if I may say humbly that I have been where I am right now because of my positive attitude, nothing worries me, nothing bothers me. And the thing is, it's not, I was not like this when I was growing up. I had a very humble beginning. You know, we had like six uh, siblings in the family and my parents. So eight of us lived in one bedroom apartment. Yes, one bedroom and a hallway and another uh, dining room, we could say, or something, which got converted into a bedroom at nighttime. So it was like that. And, you know, I had a very humble beginning in, in, in India. And not that we were starving, but we didn't have much enough. You know, we never had a refrigerator until I was like in high, not even high school, in college. We never had any like an auto my bike or anything. We had a bicycle. I would go on a bicycle everywhere. My dad also went on bicycle, you know. So I remember the day. I mean, I still remember it. I, you know, I'm grown up now. Uh, seven, five rupees I used to get every month as pocket allowance. And I used to just look forward to that after 30 days to get that, to eat a piece of cake, small piece of slice of cake once a month, because, you know, so all of us, I know a lot of audience who's listening to me, they have had humble beginnings. Not everybody really, uh, you know, born into richness uh, with a silver spoon in their mouth. But the thing is, how do you go from where you are to where you want to be? And that is where I would like to talk to everybody every week, you know, to have the mindset, to have the drive, to have the commitment. So what you just asked me was like one thing, what did it take to accomplish our goals? I would say commitment at this time. I would say commitment because if you are committed for a good purpose, for something that's going to bring great pleasure, like Tony Robbins says, see, I'm a product of all the different mentors I've had from Jim Rohn, from Tony Robbins. Of course, he's alive right now. Zig Ziglar, uh, John C. Maxwell, Stephen Brown, uh, Les Brown. I mean, you know, you think about it. Zig Ziglar. Oh, yeah, I mentioned about it. I, I'm just thinking lots of people and I'll have more names as we go each week and I'll introduce some of the best books in my library. I've probably got a thousand books, like a lot of people listening to me. The thing is, I always see the book. If you read a book, I never read a whole book, by the way, in my life. Never have ever read a whole book because I believe in getting only three things, just three things from the book. And then I want to implement those three things. Okay, makes that totally makes sense. No, I get it, but I do want to ask a, a really important question because you're in the apartment syndication business. Um, when let's say you have a student or someone you come across that's lacking drive, yes, um, especially to get their first deal, maybe they've you know lost or couldn't get an investor, lost something in the, in the process, and they lost their drive to basically commit to the first deal. What advice would you give them? Wonderful. Very good question. See, the thing is in our, uh, in America, I've been living here for so many years now. And uh, the thing uh, I find investors are the ones that need to be educated because it's their hard earned money. Very, very hard earned money. Every penny is come with this. So, so, you know, working so hard. So they need to find out who the syndicators are, what's their track record, who is the top, the principles are, how they run their company. It's not just what you buy, apartment like on a day one, it's mm -hmm. how you manage the apartment for next four to five years to bring about the uh, cash flow returns we call, right? Cash flow and the equity gain, those are the two big things that the investor is looking at because passive investors are not involved on a day-to-day -day basis. 
to really look at the asset or the apartment complex or community. We never say complex, like Monil Communities, our company is Monil Investment Group. So we say Monil Communities, Monil Standards, and we manage our own communities, by the way. So we have had 67 at the peak of 100 people also, full-time team members who are taking care of the assets for the investors. So passive investors need to do a lot of hard work to figure out, is this the right uh, scheme? Or I shouldn't say the word scheme either. That's a bad word. Uh, The proposal, you know, and they need to uh, find out from the principles of that uh, syndication that, like we say, offering through the PPM private placement memorandum, subscription agreement, and our, uh, operating agreement, plus the exhibits, plus the all the legal documents and the due diligence reports and financials, so that the investor can make a very wise decision. In my life, in the last 14 years, I have asked my investors to take the whole packet, show it to their pastors, show it to their CPAs, to their attorneys, to their parents, to their brother, sister, everybody, so that they could look at it and then analyze it a little bit and then say, yes, go ahead and invest. So don't try to do it alone. I think it's good to get some more family members involved. So your advice to somebody who is lacking the drive, as far as like um, somebody that might listen to one of your students. So if they were lacking the drive because, you know, they didn't do the things like you like you just expressed. What would you say to get them up and motivated again? Is it would it just be just to, uh, you know, propose the full deal, you know, tell the investors to, you know, check with their family, CPA and everybody. But how would you get them to get to that point? and change their minds and try to get them driven again because okay. they've already been held back a little bit. That's amazing. That's so great. This is a great question because we just got a $52 million uh, asset under contract, myself and another uh, team uh, that we have joined hands actually in this one. It's a pretty big one. I've done only $24 million before, so it's double that size. But the key thing is, uh, Alicia, I really believe in educating the investors and giving them lots of information about the emerging market, about the city, about the data, why jobs are coming in that market. Why the, like when I flew to Orlando recently and where we got this product, you know, under contract and we are in the due diligence, which we did last week already. And it's smelling like a rose. (laughs) The key thing is that, you know, you got to make sure when the freeways are being expanded, when the cranes you see, you know, uh, quite a few places and you see expansion coming into a market, certain portion of the metro area, I say, you know, and that's when you have to look into the statistics of the demographics and the jobs and the companies, uh, how many more apartment complexes will be built, all those things. We have like a whole big list of things which will make easy in the mind of the investor and my students from my academy. When I teach them, I share with them all the positives, all the things that are happening in 23 to 27 emerging markets right now in USA, even though the market has peaked. A lot of people say it's peaked, which is true. It's the biggest bull. I mean, you know, 12 years of bull is a big bull. Usually it's only eight years. So corrections will be coming. But if we buy correctly, then that's the key. You got to not overpay for the asset. You got to really look at the numbers, be conservative, look at the rental increase at a lower percentage, things like that. So that Our investors will feel the risk is not that much. They need to see that the numbers are conservative so that they can make a decision. Same thing is true for the students. You know, my partners who are uh, trying to raise money or uh, who are buying themselves, I teach them very conservatively on the underwriting, not to really, because just a small tweak in the cap rate, Alicia can increase the value of the asset by thousands of dollars. I mean, those things will not be good if those didn't happen. 
So I try to teach them to be really, really shrewd about low, uh, hiring the cap rate on exit rather than shrinking it. Those are some more, you know, a uh, little bit more complicated terms, which, of course, in my other podcast, which is yes. the syndication podcast, Syndication Made Easy, which I'm very, very excited about so that I can bring oh, to our audience a new flavor of all the questions that they've been thinking about asking. They can ask me through Facebook, through Instagram, through Twitter, through uh, VinnieChopra.com, things like that, so that I can answer them every week for them. No, that's awesome. And, and I'm really excited also because um, I'm also be partnering up with you on the syndication show because I would love to dig into the business. Thank you. Um, but I want to talk about, I'm going to go back to the drive. So have you ever found that maybe a student is tutoring? Like that would be probably more of a me if I were to sign up for your academy <laughs> who could come off a little bit too aggressive or um, arrogant to an investor and lose investors because their drive comes off to be, you know, just a little bit much. Gushy or sales many or like that. So true, Alicia. I've been in the sales and marketing business all my life. I'm an engineer, mechanical engineer from India. And I did my MBA in marketing and sales at George Washington University right here in Washington, D.C. So I totally understand where you're coming from. See, the thing is, salespeople sometimes we have a bad name, right? Salespeople always say, oh, they are pushy. They're always looking for their commission. They're always trying to close you out, whether if you want to buy or not buy, things like that. I think in the world of syndication, when we are raising money from investors, we are a consultant. We are not a salesperson. We got to sit down with them, look at their goals and dreams, aspirations, where the investors have come from. And the same thing is true with my students. I sit down with them. They have to apply for mentorship in my university, in my academy, because I don't take anybody. I need the students who are really driven, like you just asked me the word driven, because they have to be passionate about and know the whys. That's the big one. Whys in their life, they cannot come to my academy and try to discover themselves. They are at the wrong academy. I can teach them the skills, what I have perfected over the last 12 to 14 years. I'm the gentleman that never knew what NOI meant, net operating income. I didn't know anything about it. LOI, letter of intent. I didn't know anything about it. Cash flow. I did not any, well, I own uh, single family homes for over 35 years, but cash flow is so little. We never talked about cash flow, just profits was the term, you know? Mm -hmm. So I am the product of learning and getting taught by the right people. And now I've been able to see the success by utilizing those things. So the thing is driven. Our word today is driven. Driven. The students have to be driven to a point of action so that they are not really, what's the word, a passive in my academy. And, you know, I can think of so many students of mine. You know, Dylan comes to my mind very, very sharp. Sapan comes to my mind. A lot of other students come to my mind who have just crushing it because they took what I taught them, you know, taught Dylan actually mostly, uh, you know, and then... And the key thing is they are able to take it to a new height and then they are able to see the fruits of the, you know, teachings. And then I'm nothing, I'm nothing. I just gave them certain tricks of the trade that I have put and it's them, it's them who are making it happen. So one has to be driven to take action which I talk about in daily action. We'll talk about a whole we'll talk show. About that. <laughs> we'll talk about that. A lot of those things that I really believe in, how this life is. Life is so short and so forth. Let's talk about not driven at the part of the students that we just did. Mm -hmm. Now driven on the part of investors. Yes. The investors, again, you got to get into the psychology of investors. You mm -hmm. cannot just come there pushy and say, hey, this is the best deal we got under contract. It's 52 million. I mean, just some of the investors might even just shy away. They yeah. say, oh my gosh, 52 million. I have never ever invested in such a big deal. What's, what are you talking about? 
So we got to break it down. We got to make it in simpler terms. We should not even discuss the deal or proposal, I say, or offering until we have pre-existing relationships with the investors. That's the big thing. A lot of people are doing it wrong in our country. They get a deal, then they start finding the investors. That's a total no-no. You got to have the investors beforehand, talk to them, give them monthly newsletters, talk to them again, and then find out what their risk factors are. If they have lost money before or have they invested in stock market or CDs or precious metals or real estate, what are their feelings towards it? And then you say, hey, if I find a really good investment, can I bring it to you so that you could look at it and then decide? Huh? You know that way. Right? Makes sense. Yeah, no, totally makes sense. Um, so let's just say, um, I, and I'm, I'm bringing it right back to your academy, um, just because it, let's just say you've got somebody like, um, uh, I, I guess I'm, I can't use anybody from your academy as an example, but you have somebody that comes out of the gate really, really strong. Now you're, they're doing personal mentoring or personal coaching with you. They're, they're, they got the first deal on the table. They've already done the you know research and, and built a relationship with the investors, but now, um, you know, they, and they're, they're got their first deal. It's in the middle. And then all of a sudden the numbers go to crap. And now that per, that person you're personally coaching, their drive kind of, uh, the, you know, the balloon gets popped. So um, how do you help them as a personal coach get their head back in the game and be driven? Excellent. Excellent, Alicia. That's a so good point. See, the thing is, we have to live our life as a whole person, you know, and we need to look at, of course, in this case, like you just put that scenario together, if the things fall kind of going sloping down, we did uh, projections is the word, right? We took over after complete due diligence, we took over the property and now we are managing it ourselves, like in our case, or we have third party. So as the students, I teach them and I have a new academy that I'm building, how to manage apartments, because that is something is not being taught in USA at this time. It's very limited basis. So that's my other passion because we've been crushing it for the last 12 years, doing two companies, acquisition companies and two management companies simultaneously so that we can take care of all the assets to make sure how to run it operationally correct so that the cash flow comes at the end of the month and end of the quarter and things like that. But things do happen. It has happened in my case too. I'm not perfect, you know, and that's where you have to take the, I, I call it face the challenge with a chin up. That's my wording. That's my mindset. No matter what happens, you got to just face it. Don't just be fearful and don't go into a cocoon. That's not going to help anybody. So as a CEO, I remember I bought a property near NASA, beautiful property. It had $3.6 million renovations done already. And then when I took it on day one, we had sewer backups, sewer backups. I couldn't believe it. And what I found out later that they were dropping all these chemicals to cut the smell when I would go to the property. My due diligence people and I could not figure it out. But when I took over the property, guess what? Those maintenance people were gone. And they took away the sewer, the auger and everything from the, uh, you know, uh, workshop or uh, workshop we call it. And I had to face the situation, chin up, and I had to pay $32,000 per building, per building to, to get it fixed. Exactly. See, you said, ouch, you are right. You know, <laughs> so I've been a product of that. But you know what? You've got to face the situation. You've got to take action and you've got to just make it right. Make it right for the investors. That's the name of the game. You just kind of almost answered my next question. So the next question would be, how do you stay so positive and driven? I mean, the syndication business can't be easy. You just gave a perfect example. Um, $32,000 per building would, I mean, ouch. Really yes. Yes. <laughs> exactly. That, that, 
that that's definitely something that'll cause some damage. Um, so how do you stay so driven and so positive? You know, a good question. And a lot of people ask me, they say, Vinny, have you been like this all your life? And my answer is no. You know, as well as I remember my, my friends in the, like who have known me in the elementary school and junior high school and college, engineering college, they tell me that I was driven. They say that. I don't know. It's hard to go back that much. In my life, I only remember positive things, but I don't remember too many things. Negative things, never. I don't remember negative things much at all. You know, but that's okay. The thing is, I was goal-oriented, I was told by my friends. And then they gave me some instances and I said, oh, really, did I do that? So, you know, I didn't even remember it. So the thing is that when you get into uh, a position As I came in this country with $7, many of you know, my audience might know, you know, the thing is you have to make a firm commitment that you want to survive. And that if you are coming here from far away from India or any other country, or you are born in USA, you want to have a purposeful life. That's what I say. We got to really sit down with ourselves, look in the mirror and then say, who am I and what I'm here for? See, it's a short sight. I say that we are a dot on a timeline of, you know, thousands of years, let's just say that, or millions of years, if we put the dinosaurs over here and all that, we are not even on the line. I mean, you know, we live here 40, 60, 70, 80 years. That's like, a small peck, very small. So as we are here on the stage of life, why not to make the best of it? Why not to bring the positive energy to everybody we meet? Why can't we live with total integrity and uh, passion and, and, and trustworthiness and transparency and all that? So that's what has really been guiding force in my life, to be truthful, for 40 years. I've been here about 40 years or so. And that has driven me every day to be the best person and grow, not have a mindset of just like fixed or closed mindset, but be open mindset and look at the smell the roses and breathe the good air and be really in this country where we don't have to worry about the, you know, guns fighting and things and, oh my gosh, so much is going on in the world. But, you know, we are living in a great, great country. Let's make happen things for the people around us. Like Zig Ziglar says, you know, if you help enough people get what they want, you will get what you want. See, you could say, I want to do this. I want to do this. I, 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 I is not going to get you anywhere. It's the team. And that's what I believe in. You know, if our team is right, if our people are great and their morale is there as a CEO of the company, that's what I look for. The culture of our people, our, you know, their uh, habits, their behavior, uh, you know, what they are thinking and doing things together, camaraderie, all those things. So we dig into a lot of these things in the future, you know, interviews as we do totally. Yeah. No, yeah, we were actually going to go into a lot of detail on all different aspects of mindset, goals, being driven, everything from A A, A to Z. Um, But so I'd like to always end our podcast with a a piece of advice for Mr. Smiles. So if you had somebody that was just getting into this, you know, apartment syndication business. Yes. And um, in order to, what would be your advice to help them keep their drive to achieve their goals? What would be that one nugget of advice you would give them? You know, if I may say the one nugget today's podcast, I would like to say action, action. See, the thing is a lot of times we talk about a lot of things. We have a lot of goals. We have written down action. I mean, things to do, but if we act, I believe then a lot of things happen. Our subconscious, our conscious really likes to see the pleasure of accomplishment. If you may let me say that. So one nugget I would like to say is where you are right now, act, act on your goals and have the game plan. If you don't have a game plan, 
write it down. Go write down your two goals for today. Just two goals. If you were to do just two things today, what will those be? And why you want to do them? And would that bring results? See, we can do a lot of different activities today, but if the results are not there, that we are getting us closer to our goals and dreams, then we should not do them. So action, you know, I mean, say. action, and that yeah. action is going to help them out with their drive. Um, Correct. So, and I, I know that we're actually going to go into um, uh, in further detail about taking action and how important it is. So, okay, that's great. All right, all right, guys, you just heard your weekly motivation power talk with Mr. Smiles, Vinny Chopra. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment, and tune in each week and get motivated to take your business to the next level. Have a terrific week. And Vinny always says, make it happen each day. Yes. Be sure to reach out to Mr. Smiles on his website at vinnychopra.com. So that's V-I-N-N-E-Y-C-H-O-P-R-A.com. You can also invest with him, partner with him, or you can even apply to um, be part of his academy, which is really, really incredible. And there's just been some amazing students that I've talked to, you know, that have gone through that and have been so successful. So Vinny, thank you so much for your motivation talk this week. Thank you. Thank you, Alicia. We'll see you next week. Yes. Yes. All right, guys. See you next week.